For over 50 years, people have come to see the Sharks play. Talent. Skill. Speed. Intelligence. Elite level athleticism. That's not these guys. Biased. One-eyed. Opinionated. More often wrong than right. They make up for their complete lack of talent with pure dribble, gibberish and enthusiasm. This is the E.T. Stand Podcast. Sing the song now as the Corolla Sharks go top of the NRL ladder with a 34-22 win over the hapless and bottom of the table. South Sydney Rabbitohs. Look, we were winners, but we kind of felt like losers the way that they were talking after the match. So look, we'll talk to a bunch of guys that know a lot about being losers. Let's bring in Lats and Stephen <laughs> Franklin, <laughs> losers themselves. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but the funny thing is, Lats knew that joke was coming and Franco didn't. And I came up with it. Little... Yeah, well, that's true. Actually, it was your joke. You were <laughs> Nothing not funny I say is really materially for me, but because we, we kind of sing the song. That's what you think. Sharks got top. Mate, giddy up. It's good to see us right up the top there. Uh, how long it lasts, who knows. Um, yeah, I thought we would have won a little bit more convincingly myself. I, uh, I don't know. I, was, I don't know whether to be happy or, or angry. So, leaning towards happy, though. Leaning towards happy. All right, before we say hello to it's Franco, we'll on just top say... The live ladder, right? The live ladder. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're on top of the ladder, though. No one else is gonna. No one can overtake us at the end of this weekend. Well, we're equal. Equal top. Yeah, but we're top we on four again. We on are on again. top. I we know, which we not normally do. All right. Well, before we get your instant reaction, uh, Stephen Franklin, let's just say good day to Cody. You beauty, Cody. Up, up. That's right, baby. Up, up, Cronulla. We are true. We are up, up in this evening. And yeah, Nathan, I'm glad we got the two points and could put that game behind us as well. Uh, that one was, uh, yeah, not pretty at times and a little worrying, but I thought we always had enough to go through it. All right, Stephen Franklin, uh, what did you? What was your reaction? Instant, give, give us your instant reaction to the feeling of the game post, post-Sharks win, and then we'll go into the individual moments. Jeez, it wasn't convincing, was it? Um, I kind of, yeah, I kind of... Well, I mean, I had that feeling, right? There was there was everyone tipping us, all of the drama going on with South that, you know, when, when everyone's confident and everyone's tipping us, you always sort of feel a bit bit worried. Um, even even with the, the Bunnies injury toll and only having one on the bench by the end of the game, you know, it, it just reeked of the, the, the finals game last year against the Roosters where they were down and out with, with troops and still managed to find a way to get on top and... and steal the chocolates so it had that feeling i thought it was i thought it was in the bag pretty much after we scored that first try but it was never comfortable and it was just there was a there was that that edge of concern throughout so i'm glad we i'm glad we got it as you said i'm glad we can put that one behind us and uh, and it's a good work on the guys for for managing to to have that mental strength to just Hopefully that's what happened. Block it out and, and and charge on ahead and do what they did. So it was a good win in the end, but yeah, not convincing. I think that's right. I think they were they looked on point though. Those first couple of sets, they were certainly hitting the ball up pretty pretty well and quite strongly. I thought so. They looked up for the game. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, if you do it want to get involved well. in the uh, in the show, you can click on this link and you can come on. We'd love to hear your thoughts. We love it when um, when people get involved and give us a hard time and tell us about how we're wrong. We're wrong, so we'll get you in. Um, if anyone wants to click on the link and join us, by all means, do that. But we'll first up, we're going to run through. Uh, Stephen's going to take us through each of the different match moments, and we'll um, just debrief on those and just talk about what we thought, really. So let's take it take it away, Franco. All right, here we go. So uh, 12 minutes in off a scrum, uh, sweeping play with with Hines, Kennedy to Ronaldo, cutting back in to score. Um, I think that's a good outcome. You know, we have been sort of talking about the, the sweeping play without without Moylan and, and Kennedy hasn't hasn't looked good, hasn't really clicked. Well, we've seen it work here now. Um, it wasn't as yeah, fluid it as it has been in the past. Yeah, but it was still behind Ronaldo a bit. It was, it was, it was, hasn't, hasn't it was, been as fluid. It was like behind but, him and he had to... 
but it's still it. We pulled it off and we scored the try, so we'll we'll, we'll take that. You know, that's you, you can't can't knock them for for getting over the try line. So it did well there. Um, yeah, but that was un- Ronaldo. That was more Ronaldo than Kennedy and Hines. Oh, uh, yeah. I I mean, I'm happy to say that as well, right? But um, but still, credit where credit's due. It went through the hands and they scored. So um, you know, we we can't we can't dismiss it. So good work, lads. Um, uh, I'm very un Nico like there uh, at the moment. He he missed that conversion, which was probably one of the the easier ones of the night. So that was a bit of a shame. Um, four minutes later, defending on our trial line, uh, Bunny switched directions, uh, catches a few of us out, and a few slipping over for Cheekham to to stretch out and score. Um, I think that was there was a couple of moments there with the Sharks um, sort of being put on the back foot with a change in direction. Hopefully that's not a weakness that someone has spotted and, and sort of testing us out there. And it was just a bit of a haphazardness, but um, yeah, certainly they, they made a few grounds and, and sort of had a few, few hands clasping at air with, with a change in direction. Um, I thought we had more players actually on that side of the field and they kind of rushed back to tackle, but actually they didn't need to rush back as much as they did, which led yeah. to Holmes falling over. It was, as I said, that that change in direction. Braille, Braille's was like just, a, just flying out 100 miles an hour, shot out of a cannon there, and uh, that sort of brought the whole line in in that direction. And then when it turned, um, you know, we had um, the Cora already diving in deep, and um, and he sort of left everyone short. So it it was a bit of a bit of an un unfortunate scenario it was really was just caught out by sort of rushing defense so um, maybe something to be aware of in the future but i guess this happens um in the 28th minute um heinz launches the ball with ronaldo out leaping the opposition to throw a great offload as he's hitting the deck it sees wilton skipping in field to score basically untouched um, 33 minutes, uh, has Trindle going to the blind side where he has who else, but Ronaldo again, chasing through to put it down just before the dead ball line. Um, just showing in this first half, Ronaldo was in everything. He was going really well. And the halftime score was 16 points, uh, to six. I thought the, uh, there was an incident with the, with the Rabbitohs, uh, challenge actually on us was a bit unfortunate. With the kicking of the ball, I picked that up. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's one of those 50 moments, right? Do you no, remember that remember. moment? That's where, the, yeah, I knew you weren't going to remember. That's why I said I just thought I'd throw it to you. <laughs> throw to me. <laughs> nah. Yeah, so what happened was is that the um, the Rabbitohs guy could put the ball down quickly, and then the Sharks guy just kind of kicked it as he was. Oh, the T. Wilton, when he stepped and aside, when, and, he, and he stepped it in. Yeah, he stepped. Yeah. Yeah. And then the yeah. Rabbitohs get a damn penalty from that. It just seems a bit yeah, that, rubbish. That was ridiculous. Was a, well, he yeah. he put that dead ball down. He'd barely even been tackled. Like, he, he was... Yeah, you know, he kind of did the quick plant ball yeah. thing and he just happened to move his foot. Yeah, I thought I think, that, I think that there's a bit of... Bit of black, white, and blue glasses going on there. If it was the other way around, we'd be we'd be calling for something. But, never. like I said, a bit of 50-50 these days with the, the ball plant and... and Playing the ball before you're ready. Yeah, well, it's, it's a bit grey. Similar to the Blake Braley one in um, what I'll was it? To your feet. Uh, last year yeah. against the Roosters in the final when we got the damn bloody penalty thing. Yeah, those sort of things always go against the Sharks. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Oh, okay, keep going. Speaking about going against the Sharks, I don't know if I was talking to you about it earlier, Boldo. I don't know if you heard Franco, uh, Nico down at the try line. I think they might have been their first try that they scored Souths and uh, Nico. <laughs> Pulling up the referee and saying something along the lines of, um, "We've had all the calls go against us. You can't officiate based on their position on the ladder or something like that." <laughs> it's about oh, like, you could have gotten in trouble on that one, but um, good at him to try and keep Klein honest because someone's that, got it. That normally refers to someone being higher on the ladder when you say position of the ladder. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> well, there yeah. is a hierarchy in the NRL of teams that get favoured. And so the Sharks are just well down the bottom in terms of, one of them. teams that get favoured. I don't think Klein is I one of the if, referees. I don't know. I don't know. We, we I think do not get favours from referees, Franco. Well, no, I don't think we get favours, but I don't think we're as hard done by as potentially some of the other teams out there that Who's have been solid well as... Oh, I th- look, I'll, I'll 
I'll bite my tongue a little bit, but there was a was a bit of a stats out on on Fox Sports late last year, and it was showing that the the Bulldogs, the Tigers, and might have even been the the Warriors were really hard done by, and they were saying that it, it sort of blew up because the Warriors were were sort of talking about how they always get you know poorly treated in the referee standards, and and that everyone sort of just said, well, you just got to start winning and you know, the refs will, will start treating you differently. And you know what? That's kind of happened, right? The Warriors are getting treated a bit better after after a great season last year. And and then now no longer the, the whipping bag. So. Surely, surely it has just... nothing to do with it about what they sacrificed during COVID or anything, though. Well, I don't know. Like I said, timeline and everything, no, it an doesn't quite bias. line up. There's an unconscious yeah. bias that just happens Correct. towards the top Correct. teams. The stronger teams, yeah. Through. Shout out to Les. Uh, you are right. Brandon Hamden, you only coming back through reserve grade. Uh, will be a massive in next week or the week after. We do miss Hamlin, you Ellie, and, and we'll we'll Thank talk you. about the Sharks bench actually at the end of end of the debrief as Franco takes us through because I do want to touch on how many minutes Talakai got and uh, some of the other forward play as well. All right, so it was half time, Franco. Half half time, six points sixteen. Um... Eight minutes into the second half, off the back of a couple of quick play the balls. Uh, the Sharks spread it from left to right with Trindle throwing a wobbly Harbour Bridge pass out to Katoa, who does what Katoa cool does pass. with great finishing in the corner. Um, in the 55th minute, after Burgess steamrolls us, the bunny spread it wide, a combination of being short plus Ronnie Nero probably coming in. Uh, Milne is able to get to the corner with Trindle and uh, Kennedy hanging on. Um Another bit of Kennedy magic in the 65th minute, knocking back a Trindle bomb to Wilton, who dives over and scores. Three minutes later, Burgess, who's been destroying us in his second stint, gets an offload from Havali, who uh, pokes his nose through, allowing Burgess to dive over untouched. So, um, yeah, yep. Uh, in the uh, 74th level. minute, um, just a, a, a bog standard right to left play with another rainbow pass, but this time from Walker. Sees Tasco over in the corner and it keeps the game honest. It's a little bit touching. I'll tell you what, here. that moment, Franco, where that South Sydney try went in over on the on the what the Sharks right, you could see Katoa was annoyed. He was like, oh, man, come on, guys. Like, they just got caught and he just, he was pissed. So I can kind of see that. Uh, there was a moment, actually, a couple of play, a couple of minutes earlier, where I was going to call out where there was an Iro pass which went astray. Yeah, I remember thinking, yeah, there was the Iro pass that went astray. And I remember probably thinking, would have scored if that was Talakai. Okay, we score if that's Talakai. So I'm not sure. Look, I'm not sure we got some bubbles, we'll talk- but yeah, that was my first impression when I saw that. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, let's keep going through it, Franco. So what's the score at this point? Oh, I don't know. Don't ask me. That's, <laughs> let, let me get that's going in the back of my head. Um, uh, the ahead 20, 20, 22, 28, I think it was. 20, yeah, one, one try in it. One try in 22, it. Just 20, say that. Um, and then after not going for the drop goal with two minutes to go, um, only a try in front. Hines uh, grubbers the ball through with Talakai putting pressure on, sees the bunnies knock on into the wedding arms of Braley. Try time, baby. Uh, closing out the game, 22 to 34, uh, with an odd miss to start. Uh, Nico nails five from six, continuing his pressing kicking game this season. Uh, obviously, just before that try, had a, a great sort of dummy and run from um, from Braley, who then passed off to Talakai, who who got pulled down short of the line, uh, as you can see in my comment. Just, just dummy again, Braley. Take it yourself, champ. You've got this. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, though. That uh, had they have kicked those two points at uh, on the stroke of half time, would have made it a bit more frightening to watch that last um, last bit of the game play out. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true, actually, that was a bad that. miss. I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten yeah. about that part. Yeah, you're right. That's um, yeah, that's a bad miss. All right. Well, let's look. I alluded to it pretty quickly. Um, I. I, I don't know about Eero. You know, we had Talakai at the top of the tiers in terms of the Sharks' top players. And and look, if you look at the stats, he played something like 18 minutes or something. Like, an, like how can we only play 17 minutes to see for Talakai? 
when well, like it just doesn't seem to make any sense at all. Like Eero is not better than Talakai, and so I do hear you. Play... I do hear you, but Eero also made 172 meters. So you know, if, if he, people are he talking went looking about, ball, if, yeah, if people if people are talking about, you know, why why Talakai is so good is because he does the the hard yards and, and makes good meters. Well, Eero is also doing that. So I think we need to to branch out of that and and sort of say, well what else does Talakai bring to the team when he's in the centers? And it's that silky pass, that combination with Ronaldo. He's got that, right? Maybe Eero and Ronaldo can, can form that. But at the moment, Talakai is just really good there. He's still, he's still got 77 meters off, off. What was it? How long was he on there? 17 minutes. 17 minutes. His first two runs were just blistering. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely noticed. So maybe they're hoping that he had to, would have to look. Someone put it in the comments. Iro or Talakai, who plays centers? If anyone can let me know and give us an answer on that one, that would be much appreciated. I'm, I'm not sure. Did you? I mean, I, I'll let you you continue if you want, Boldo. Going to talk about the bench a little bit more, but I did think the the minutes was a bit weird of of you know who got what and for how long. Um, especially considering Jack Williams walking up the tunnel with a busted, busted leg. I don't know what he had. I didn't hear. Uh, no, he got a quad Andrew. cork, mate. Quad, no, quad, he got cork. A quad, quad cork. Yeah, so Jack so, Williams played 37. Steve Vitalikai played 17. Tapura played 11. And Rudolph played 38. Whilst yeah. Hazelwood and, and Kafusi played, um, yeah, kind of 40 minutes each. Here we go. Jakey's coming through. and There he is. Well, Jakey's there he is. Always right. He's just always right. Well, like, Talakai should be the center. I just don't get it. So, well, I guess the thing is you're playing, you're playing McInnes for 60 minutes. So, and you've got your two starting roles playing basically 40 minutes. So, maybe there's just not enough minutes there. But you're playing Talakai as a middle forward and you're giving him 20 minutes when he's an, mm. he's an electrifying back. I just, yeah, I'm not sure about that. What? That's what do you think? Yeah, mate, I don't know. I I, I just think um, Fitzy's trying to build Iro's uh, confidence there with him at centre. Um, I couldn't fault Iro. I thought he made a couple of really good try-saving tackles as well. Uh, he's a strong defender. And he went hunting for the ball tonight and got us out of trouble a lot of times. As Franco alluded to, 172 run metres is, is pretty solid. Uh, in regards to the interchanges, yeah, that is a bit of a weird one. I thought... Toby's 38 minutes was definitely warranted. I thought he was brilliant. He just didn't stop trying and competing. Toby's, you know, tackle breaks and his defence was immense. Um, yeah, I, I, it's it's almost like Fitzy's as confused as us on what to do with Talakai, isn't it? I, I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a funny one. It's like he probably didn't see the need to play him so many minutes given oh, we didn't really look like losing. I know it wasn't comfortable, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought, and, and to only play, I thought Tapu had some good runs to play him for 11 minutes. It's, it's a couple of interesting decisions. Why don't decisions. Mind playing players for 11 minutes or short amount of times? Um, if it's making an impact. But um, yeah. 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 yeah what, one thing I do want to mention in regards to benches, though, and it happened to us during the Tigers, but since that game, we seem to be just ripping teams apart. Um, getting quite injured during games, some of these players. And I don't know if it's our hard running, our hard tackling or what, but we just seem to be destroying teams and decimating them. Uh, leaving yeah, we're them not putting very, them away, though, when they're all injured. Well, that's the problem. It's that's not we're like, not, like we're they not putting one player on the bench. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, when that when, when, when Jai Gray was came. having his HIA, they were down to Tom Burgess, weren't they? Not, not to mention no. a, a reshuffled back line of, you know, people not really in their right positions, so uh, you, you target that a little bit more and, and, and test them. So, yeah, what do we think odd. of um, what do we make of South? They're just rubbish, aren't they? They're, oh, they are, mate. They're in dire straits, they're, they're, they're just, yeah, they're cool. I think, I think it's worth calling out credit where credit's due. Our very own Kelly, before a ball was kicked in round one off the uh, the preseason challenge form, called out South and said, They're in trouble, they're they might go winless. By the time they get to us, and I tell you what, he wasn't far wrong. It's what have they got? Wrong. One win, 
one, one win, four win, uh, win against the Bulldogs, I think it was, or the Tigers or something. Yeah, I think you're right. The Bulldogs, yeah. and they 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 could have could have lost against the Bulldogs. Yeah. You know, had had the Bulldogs held on to the ball a little bit better. Um, and and so well done, Kelly. You picked it, mate. They're bottom of the ladder, and and they're struggle street. I don't think I don't think coaches in trouble. So then they even put Jack Whiten. They put Jack Whiten the fullback. And then I remember them just saying to the commentary, oh, this might bring Jack White in the game like Joey Manu. And then hardly seen, didn't do it. <laughs> but I'll tell you support. what, they could have really used Damien Cook out there tonight, Souths. I've, he could have, you know, his little quick runs yeah, out of Yeah, I didn't notice their hooker at all. I, yeah, so, it was just weird. That was a dumb move. But well, I wonder you know, was... I wonder if, if, if Damien Cook would have linked up with Cody Walker a bit more. Um, and that, that could have been a... a yeah, that could have been a you know bit of experience, like we said last yeah. week or in the pre pre, pre the preview. Um, having having um, Latrell out and then taking Cook out meant you were you were missing a lot of experience in your spine. So that was a bit of an odd choice, I think. It's at least have him on the bench, right? Yep. Well, it's state of origin level player, and you just drop them it seems highly unusual. So Mate, he topped the, he topped their tackle count last week as well in a losing game. Like, yeah, how do you drop him all those efforts? Tackle count that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> oh, oh wow! I'll leave that alone. <laughs> uh, some jokes, some jokes there, man. Never lie. All right, years and then Cook is the eighth the man with the biggest mistake leading up. Wow. I don't know. I think the biggest mistake with South was letting Reynolds go and not having a halfback plan. I didn't like the look of their kind of halfback, but he did do that brilliant kind of 40 20 kick. That, so let's just go through some he of the plays. What did we make did of well. He did well. What did we make of the. Yeah. Wow, did he? Yeah, he did. A, I thought he was pretty good. Like, he didn't get them over the line, but he was involved. He was barking orders. I thought, you know, for I don't know how many games he's had, but it's only a handful, right? So he did. he did pretty well. He did do but that brilliant thing where Kennedy, where Kennedy tried to catch it and stay in, and and then oh, just yeah. went out. And thinking, oh, well, that was just Kennedy, Kennedy misreading Botching. the play. That wasn't so. It much wasn't even a forty twenty. No, it wasn't. That's what I said. That's why it was a misread from Kennedy. Could have just yeah. let it go out, and we would have got the ball back. What do we make of Kennedy so far now, Franco? We've seen him a few games back. Oh, I I, I still like Kennedy. I think he's great. Um, I think he does, you know, we saw a few flashes of brilliance from him tonight. I think he's getting better in terms of um, sort of leading the guys around in defense. And uh, it's funny to say, given that, that you know, we, we've let a few few soft ones in today, but um, but I think he's good. I think he, 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 he works well. He's got a great combination with, with the guys. And I think he's underrated. He had that brilliant move at the um, late in the second half where he, he kind of just jinked and cut through the South Sydney defence when they put the ball into our in-goal area. So he still doesn't yeah. look like he's on absolute fire, though. He's not. He's miles off being. I the just. Best I smile. I mean, that we've seen. Again, I think that's sort of why it, I sort of mentioned he's he's underrated, right? People sort of keep thinking about you know what's what's better. The grass is greener, but he's a he's a solid fullback. Maybe would have liked a bit of extra pace from him. Um, you know, you sort of maybe pace off off the mark. He's he's really good though. Is as uh, um, Jake mentioned that that run in the second half to get us out of trouble that was brilliant. So again, maybe I'm a victim of of what I've mentioned. You know that that bias of of grass is greener, wanting something more. But he he does he does his job. He works well. I wouldn't swap like him. He's underrated. I don't, I don't want to swap him. I'll tell you who I wouldn't swap is the wingers. How good are the Sharks wingers? I think they're the reason we're like wingers, as much as they say, oh, you know, Talis has his joke, oh, wingers score tries because they're marked by other wingers. But, you know, some of those tries, they're not happening if it's not for the brilliance. Like one of the one that went behind Ronaldo, the one where he catches it, then immediately offloads. Yeah. Like, I think the wingers are the best players in the Sharks team. Like, and so I heard in commentary, you know, Vossi compared them to Takiri and, and Sailor in terms of just strength and brilliance of wingers. Jeez, we're lucky to have those wingers. And if the Sharks team of the half century was named now, I'm not sure if Ronaldo misses out. Well, both of them are pretty integral to the team, right? They're 
they do a lot of the hard stuff. They're they're always in field when they're in our half. They're they're just doing all the right things, and I think we we sort of touched on it um, in the uh, the first tiers for Boldo, where um, you know the previous season where uh, Katoa was injured and we didn't think we'd we'd miss him uh, when he scored that try off the scrum play, but. You know, the team sort of went downhill a little bit. We, we sort of lost a few cogs while he was out injured. And um, I think it just sort of goes to show how good he is for the team, which, speaking of, we've got um, him with the high shot on Murray, which I would have thought no, might have been nothing. just a fine only, except for no, the fact no, that nothing. he failed his HIA and uh, didn't come back. Stranger things have happened in the NRL, so there could be a chance of, of him maybe missing out a week, um, in which case could be your favourite lats with Harati or maybe Stone Street gets a debut. Right. Right. Stop Let's get it. Stop it. All right. Well, we've maybe got one of our Kaylee Road shifts, shifts yeah, out. Yeah, it's that uh, Kaylee Road shifts out. Here. All right. Well, before we get on to the others, uh, let's bring in um, – let's just make sure that we can do this. Let's bring in Nathan. There we go. Legend, what do you think of the Sharks tonight, buddy? Hey, mate. How are you doing? Oh, we got there at the end, but um, yeah, I was worried. Like before the game, I was fearing an ambush. But we, we well, got. What, we got made, what made you think? What made you worried? Why would you possibly think that the Sharks <laughs> would lose against the bottom place team when we're top of the table and expected to win? Why would you possibly think that 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 would normally happen to us? I don't understand what history we have that would lead you to that conclusion. I don't understand. Explain that to me, Nathan. Why you uh, think the Sharks would have lost? I don't know, the Tigers game still lives in my mind. Oh. Free, so, um, no, it was. It puts it was, the Tigers game in perspective, doesn't it, though? It does. But um, if we, credit to if we South, win that, was, talking yeah. about being on the top of the table, wow. Yeah, outright then. Yeah, it's true. All right, Nathan, what did you like about today's <coughs> match for the Sharks? Hit us to it. Um, I thought our middle forwards were, were, were very good. I know South were. Short on a few, but yeah, Burgess, yeah, he wouldn't go away in a hurry. But um, no, he our middle forwards did later platform, yeah. They, um, but I think towards our edges, sort of, I don't know, we nodded off a bit towards the end, but I think, yeah, our middles really laid a platform. Yep. I thought Oregon yeah. Confuci was strong early on. He had Oregon, some damaging yeah, right. runs. He was really putting in. Has he changed yeah. his haircut? Yeah, yeah. I think he had he another changed. one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's, he's got the he's got the mullet, back. man bun type, shaved at the sides. Thing. Hey, then what'd you make of Talakai only getting seventeen minutes? Uh, he needs more. Seventeen's not mu- not enough. Would you would you, play him him would you play him at lock? Would you play him at lock? Like swap him with McInnes, like share the load a bit, or that's kind yeah, of kind of what I sense. would do, Nathan. But I got I got shouted down for that comment, so <laughs> I'll sit here that's quietly. Because he should be a centre. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I know Eero's got his. I mean, yeah, many fans have got are fans of Eero, but um, Talakai's just as good too. He's just different. I know Talakai's. Talakai's better. All right, well, let's hit into the next player I want to talk about. I talked. They mentioned in commentary that Nico Hines only had one try assist uh, so far this season. I think he might have gotten one tonight. Uh, what do we think of Nico? Yeah, he got one tonight. So. I don't think he'll get the daily end points. I think surely Ronaldo gets them tonight. We'll go to you first, Nathan. What do you make at Nico tonight? I thought his bit of game management was a bit off. You know, if, if we got like a, was it a 16-point lead? I thought we should have kicked to the corners just to get South to dig it out of their end. But, yeah, I'm, he seems a bit slow starting this year. He's not carving it up. His defense like seems year. to be... His defence seems to be a lot better, and his yes. kicking, his 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 goal kicking, goodness me, is absolutely critical and, and proving to be really helpful. Lats, I can see you all champing the bit to come in. What's your take on Nico? Yeah, mate, a little bit clunky <laughs> tonight. Um, just in his in his passing, I thought he got a couple of, couple of forward passes that they stick, we score. I don't know. He, his kicking is good. Like his goal kicking's been brilliant. Um, you know, like couple of years ago we're losing games based on our goal kicking so it's nice to have that 
stability there, especially from the, the way you can nail them from out wide. Um, yeah, I, I thought he's just a little clunky, though. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it, maybe he's just a little bit it off. Might, Who knows? It might just be, you know, he and Trindle haven't had that many games together, still building that combination. Maybe yeah. they don't quite know the roles that each play in that in that team yet. Um, I think they they both are really good uh, contributors to the team, and I think Nico, yeah, sort of sort of similar to um, two seasons ago, early early on, then um, maybe a little bit guilty of, of trying too hard, and because he's in everything, he's his fingerprints are on everything our team do at the moment. Um, trying his guts out, and I think he's he's a really great contributor to to the team as a whole. Um, but you're right, there is a little bit a little bit not quite right, I guess. Just not polished. Um, just, yeah. yeah, and and I just think it's just you know building that combination with Trindle and yep. um, and sort of you know I don't think I don't think there's quite uh, an idea of maybe who's directing that team or who's owning the team. Um, you know, Trindle's more of that organizer. Um, yep. But Hines has a seven on his back, so you know how does that play out? But I think I think Hines is doing a really good job. I don't think he's letting us down. Um, no, so a bit of bit of on the job training can't hurt. Yep. Maybe maybe the having the buy. Trindle's kicking's been better. Up, it has definitely has. Trindle's kicking's been better. So maybe that's yeah. You know, back to your point of finding the the role in the team. It just feels like Trindle's kicking a little bit more now. Um, with maybe the more accuracy on the bombs and that sort of stuff. Uh, what do we make of Blake Braley, Nathan, tonight? Uh, much better, yeah. He's, taking, he's, take, he's definitely taking that line on which we've been wanting him to do more of. But, um, yeah, I thought it was much better tonight. Yeah, exposing yeah, those, better. exposing those, um, you know, those markers that aren't on side and that, he was quite good tonight. Yeah. Well, if he dummies, he scores, doesn't he, with the damn Talakai one? And then, yeah. and then he picks up the ball and then just doesn't throw it and then's trying to milk the penalty, which which completely just didn't work, did it? I don't think he's going to make the state of origin. He's a bit off that, isn't no. he? Yeah, not, not in consideration. But I do think as the game started, I thought he started out strong and I, I thought back to, to last week's tears, Boldo, and I was like, you know what? Braley has been doing well this year. He should he should be shifting up up the tears. I think yeah, he's he's, he's doing well. Him. I think I think yeah, Braley, right. you know, he's 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 had a cracker of a season so far. I know it's still early days, but he he's not he's better than well. he's not better than Sioni or Nikara or Talakai. Come on, how, how, how can a player that gets seventeen minutes mid. a game top the tears? Well, he's going to have to go down the tears now. Nathan, did you see the tears? Did you see that ridiculous segment that I did of ranking the Sharks players based in an order and, and, and my, my kind of wrestling take? Did you see that or am I just dreaming? No, I did, I did see that, yes. I did watch what did it. You th- who did you have higher or lower on the tears, just out of interest? Oh, who was I tough on? Well, you can't remember. I can't remember. Well, if you want to watch the video, I'll put it in the link at this point and, and kind of go yeah. check it out. All right, Nathan, give us your man of the match before we let you get out of here and get back to your Saturday night. I think it's Ron- I'll give it to Ronnie. Yeah, out yeah, now, Ronaldo. Us, Ronnie. I should have just asked you who was your second man of the match. Or who was <laughs> who was Ronnie and Ronaldo. Ronnie. T- T- <laughs> Ronaldo, man of the match. Mulatalo was second. Yeah. All right, Nathan, That's thanks right. for coming in, legend. Mate, good All to right. see you, buddy. We'll see you, Nathan. Guys. We'll see you next time. See you, mate. How All good right, is that jersey? Uh, Oh, should we should have talked about that, should we? He's such a legend, that guy. He's top like that. Foundation he's, member. He's, he's just an absolute legend. <laughs> just giving us a hard time. Thanks for coming in, Nathan. If anyone else wants to come in, you can click on this link and let us know who you think was man of the match. Um, I think it'd be entertaining to get you in, Jake Matuzic, if you could be bothered. All right, uh, Lats, who did you think was uh, – who else stood out from you in the Sharks team tonight in the 34-22 victory over the Rabbits? Uh, mate, I was very impressed with Toby. I, I was excited to see him um, get the call up. Unfortunate for Billy Burns, but I'll tell you what: without Toby there and his intensity, uh, I don't. We could have could have even gone the other way and lost. I thought he was brilliant. He was ripping and tearing. I thought Kafusi was good, as I uh, mentioned before. Teague was brilliant, although he did have that one brain snap where he raked that ball. I thought and sort of let them in. Teague solid. Yeah, the other that end. was a soft and, break. It was a soft rake, and it was presented. Just it was right there for him, wasn't it? 
But he did go down the end of the field and score off that um, Ronaldo pass. What about that pass from Ronaldo? Jeez. How good is Ronaldo? Yeah. Oh. All right, Franco, are you giving us anyone else other than the players we said on Man of the Match? I, I just want to back up Lats with with uh, uh, Rudolph. I was thoroughly impressed with Rudolph. I didn't think he was any chance of, of coming back to play. I know there was uh, some early rumours about him coming back and then, you know, the coach sort of said he was he was close uh, a couple of days ago. But I, you know, I didn't really expect him to, to man up and if he did, it would have been sort of a, a cameo appearance, you know, if we're saying that he had syndesmosis um, and that's a pretty pretty severe injury that normally sidelines guys for a while, not to mention his, his turf toe that he's got going on as well, he he came out and he really helped us. He defended well. He was hitting hard. It was it was a great performance from from Toby. So yeah, he really impressed me. Um, I obviously got to talk about uh, the wingers but yeah we touched on on Braley I think Braley did a really good job sort of directing the guys picking up the tempo of the game when it needed to sort of be sped up um and then um yeah the talking cameos I thought to Pua he I noticed him when he came on he had that run big big hit I don't mind I, think, I don't mind a player coming on for 11 minutes yeah, I'm not saying Adam that's Richardson's not it makes an impact. Then, impact. Yeah. I do, impact. I do think he's sort of got that that scenario at the moment where he's, he's the new kid in the team and and you know he's doing a lot of the decoy runs. He doesn't get the ball as often well, as maybe the, he he's wants. He's now the top. He's, he's playing Tom's position. Yeah, so he, he runs through and he doesn't get the ball, but keep running, buddy. You, you'll get the ball eventually uh, once that confidence is there. And and but when he gets it and he hits hard, he he pokes his nose through almost every time. He's he's doing well. All right, Frank, I'm going to give you a chance here to talk about something I know you will want to mention <laughs> because you yourself are a disruptor. <laughs> <laughs> in life, <laughs> business, <laughs> everything. You just disrupt everything. It's like we can say, oh, the Sharks should wear their blue and black jersey this week and Frank will say, no, they should wear the yellow one. And then if we wear <laughs> the yellow one, Frank will turn up and say, no, let's oh, wear is. the blue and black one. So let's just talk about this. The disruptor kicking rule and that penalty on what was it, Ramian or Katara? I can't remember who it was. That was just absolutely ridiculous. Ramian. It? it was Ramian. ridiculous. Yeah. So I gave Kelly credit before a ball was kicked in round one about predicting the, the bunny's woes. Well, I'm going to give myself some credit before a ball was kicked in <laughs> round like one. You, mate. I called that that would be the worst rule introduced to the NRL and we would be arguing over it all season. This rule well, we're not arguing dying. about it because we all think that it's stupid. It's terrible. It's just there's it's too much grey in there. Um, I just like he, he was making going to make a catch. Like it's not like he was even looking the for the bat back. But because his eyes looked at, I think it was Jack White, and initially he was ruled to be a disruptor. Like how can you? Uh, it's just so like telling someone what they think. Jakey here Literally. saying that was a joke. Uh, in NFL, they teach cornerbacks to watch their opponent's eyes to work out when challenged for the ball. So I agree, Jake. It's it's all about coaching players to be better, not making rules to cover deficiencies. So if we think a little bit back, it does. It's not too far back, but if we think a little bit back, uh, several years, there were there were commentators and pundits in the game complaining about the bombs and kicks for tries about how it ruins the game and, and how there should be, can we bring in a rule or can we do something to try and stop that as a way of, uh, you know, scoring tries. And now here we are doing things like this to, to make it easy. It's, it's a complete 180 and it's, it's ridiculous. If anything, not only should we not have this rule, we should probably remove uh, blockers like, you should be allowed to try and um, block for uh, your catcher, right? If if that makes a, a a player coming through from the offensive team to learn how to weave through players to get to the ball, like how exciting is that to see someone who who understands different oh, angles to run? You block, then the guys will be tackling each other. No, no. Look, it's 
that's a different discussion. We'll, we'll argue about that one in the off season, but this rule with how gray it is, it's, it's just terrible. Now I will say upon replay, it looked like Ramian knocked on. So we probably wouldn't get the ball or the try anyway, uh, or the, you know, the dropout, but it's a stupid rule. Uh, he did, he did look at the, the catcher, but, at the time of, of the leap, he was up for the ball. He was reaching for the ball. Like, so what? Like, let them let them balk. Like, that's so dumb to not not allow players to try and put someone off their game. It's ridiculous. Well, the thing is, the ball's moving at such speed, right? And in the air. Like, like we knew when we were kicking the damn footballs around at Shark Park, just mucking around. Like, it is difficult to, to judge those balls when they're swirling around. And so... You know, what you are trying to do is gamble. You try to gamble to try and find a way to catch the ball or just jag the ball. And so it's kind of taken that out of the game. And then you actually okay. heard Greg Alexander taunting it and just saying, well, is that a disruptor? So that was yeah, like disruptors was right. off the... Yeah. He was right. I was like, well, when's that a disruptor? Like, what's a... When is a different disruptors coming? Ah, look, I think I think that... Um, if you end up... If you end up in the line and someone's looking to pass the ball to an outside back or something, and you wave your arms there, what's the difference, right? It's, you know, someone's about to tackle and uh, catch the ball, and you go in to try and get the ball off them, and you miss, and they drop it. Is that disrupting? Where where, where do you draw the line? It's, it's almost just like stamping out any attacking kick, but any high attacking kick, because what's the point? Wow. Like, that, yeah. that wasn't even a backpack, like, he had his hands there, ready to take, and, and he was in a position where he could have got it. He was centimeters away from catching that. That was just rubbish. But anyway, look, NRL goes again with a bunch of rules. G'day, SJD, just coming back from the game. We nearly got climbed. Interesting. <laughs> I didn't feel he got that climbed. Um, so I, I think that might actually hit the vernacular, SJD. I think that one's going to stick around uh, getting <laughs> climbed. Uh, but glad that you got out to the game. Geez, it's a bloody horrendous trip out to that Stadium Australia game, though, isn't it? Franco loves Stadium Australia. It just looks barren and like if you compare that to the to the Parramatta Eels Cowboys match out at Combank Stadium, which just feels a little just so much more compact and a bit more in it, doesn't it? So it's just not quite right. So what can you say? You won't no, right, well, look, out there. Yeah, well, look, getting you to go to a game at the, in the starters is just a little bit tricky, isn't it? So <laughs> just getting you to turn up to damn shark parks, hard enough. <laughs> Man can't even get past the bloody Corolla bloody kids' toys or the kids' play area without getting injured. How the hell are you meant to get down the track? <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, look, last word for you each, Scott Latino. As the Sharks march on to play the Cowboys next week at home. Yeah, um, mate. You, um, you take on it now. Can't take that lightly after them coming off a tight loss this week. Um, hopefully we're a little bit more polished. Um, hopefully Ueli's back. Um, who, who knows? Um, I don't know if Jack Williams will play. Only a cork. Hopefully he does. Um, but look to bash them around in the forwards and they lay the platform and hopefully uh, Nico and the boys can finish it off. Yeah. Look, we apart from, apart from a woeful Bulldogs um and a tight match over in Auckland we've been a bit leaky uh they're they're a quick team they can score points yeah a bit concerned about our defense this game so let's see how we go uh we've got a first time viewer he has just come through and commented <laughs> uh get a uh geez, you're a good looking girl there matthew um i don't know who <laughs> that, that guy, the guy is off the ABC? With... <laughs> is that that's that's the Doja Cat fan, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Shark Park! Looking forward to looking forward to seeing you back at Shark Park soon, Maddie. You're an absolute legend. All right, well, look, the Sharks march on. The Sharks top the NRL ladder. I think it's by what is it? Four and against to what? Eleven positive points or thirteen positive points or whatever the number is. I'll just go check that here. What are we? Uh, Nine points on the field ahead. So, you beauty, as Jakey says, the Sharks are top. They'll be back at Shark Park against the Cowboys at 4 p.m. on Sunday. Um, so, 
Thank you, Sharks, for taking us to the top of the table as we seek along now. Uh, for anyone watching this, um, do hit the, if you haven't hit the like or subscribe button, or if you're new to the channel, uh, please do that because it gets us in front of as many people as we possibly can. And for those listening on Spotify, um, we say hello to you as well. Uh, we are out already. Uh, we will have a classic Cowboys Cronulla Chronicle is a 2015 round 22 match that sees the Sharks play the Cowboys, Matty Williams and Chris Kelly. Uh, review that one. That's actually a pretty good fun game. Pretty much the crux of the 2016 teams in that, minus minus the halves. So you see Jack Bird and Jeff Robson in the halves. And as we do typically do on the classic Cronulla Chronicles, of course it's a Sharks win. Uh, and then we'll have our regular Tuesday night show. Yep. Yeah, and then up, up Cronulla as we go on to that. I uh, will see you guys on Tuesday night for the live show. Uh, until then, we say up, up Cronulla. Top of the table, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, stop right now, Spy Skills. That's just terrible. Man, that. All right, <laughs> Mate, see you next time, kids. Classic. For over 50 years, people have come to see the Sharks play. Talent. Skill. Speed. Intelligence. Elite level athleticism. That's not these guys. Biased. One-eyed. Opinionated. More often wrong than right. They make up for their complete lack of talent with pure dribble, gibberish, and enthusiasm. This is the ET Stand Podcast.